What's up guys, Eric here, and welcome to Rant and Preview, the weekly mega video where we talk about all of our favorite DC shows on the CW. So careful for spoilers if you're not caught up with all of those shows. You've been warned, let's get into it. So as always, uh, let's start with Supergirl and talk numbers. So it looks like the previous episode titled Alex has been shunned by some viewers. Only 1.75 million live viewers tuned in, which makes this another season and series low, dropping it even further in viewership than the previous week's episode titled Ace Reporter. So I think it's safe to assume that, you know, people didn't just miss the return of Supergirl due to not knowing when it would come back after a break. They just didn't tune in. And I'm going to discuss this even more in my full season two overview after the show ends the season. But I feel strongly that the absence of some major uh, storyline arc across the entire season has hurt Supergirl in season two, among some other things. We'll talk about it then. But this week's episode is titled City of Lost Children, and here is the synopsis. When an alien attacks National City, Supergirl and the DEO learn that the alien is a Forian, an otherwise peaceful race with telekinetic powers. Guardian gets a lead on the Forian's address, but instead of finding the culprit, he finds a very scared boy named Marcus. Marcus will only trust James, so it's up to the Guardian to stop the attacks on the city, and Rhea's plan escalates. So this sounds like it might be the James, aka Guardian-centric episode that we were promised to see this season. Like I've mentioned many times before this season, James has been more separate from the story than he ever was in season one. I mean, we had Kara, who got fired from CatCo for a while, and then we had Wynn leaving CatCo to work at the DEO full-time. Uh, James has had a lonely existence this season outside of his team-up stuff with Wynn as Guardian and the whole vigilante stuff. Um, and since Guardian is a vigilante, you know, he sometimes helps the DEO, but he's kept out of the loop for the most part, keeping his connection to Supergirl and the DEO resting on the shoulders of Wynn in his spare time. So in this episode from the synopsis and the preview trailer, it looks like James will connect with the child Marcus and put him in a position to assist in stopping the Forian. So James will be very important this week. We also don't know about how much this will tie into Rhea's plan, but manipulating a normal, you know, normally peaceful creature into causing a bunch of damage and attacking Supergirl um, is not above what Rhea has done in the past. It also seems that with Largan out of the picture, there are no limits to what she'll do to get mon -El back and, you know, punish those who have opposed her. It's like taking the muzzle off a rabid dog at this point and she's just going wild. I am curious if this will set up a path for James as a guardian to take a bigger role with the team over the DEO or if it's just a bonus episode in terms of showcasing another character. Uh, what I love though about last week's episode, uh, Alex, was that everyone felt like they were part of the team. You know, it's a wasted resource for the DEO to not include James, not just in talent, but in funds. I mean, James is running around in a prototype super suit that when created from DEO assets. And as far as the Forians go, I can't seem to remember anything about this race from the comic books, and I've researched it. I can't find anything related to them. So they might be, you know, specific for the TV show. Um, but since this episode is titled City of Lost Children, they could be referring to the Children of the White Lobe from the comics. And this ties back to the Green Lanterns and a Green Lantern Daxamite named Sodom Yat. Uh, it's kind of a loose reference, but since these children were very powerful psychokinetics in the comics, um, they could adjust this for the TV and turn them into the kids that we're seeing on Supergirl. I suppose we'll have to wait and see this week if this child Marcus and the Forian have anything to do with Rhea and her plans for Earth. It seems like it could be disconnected, but she might have, you know, she might have stirred the hornet's nest, so to speak. Uh, yeah, I, I don't really know. I mean, it's hard to tell with Supergirl because the show is just all over the place, really, in terms of storytelling. So, uh, yeah, are you guys excited about this week's episode? And if you are, let me know in the comments what you're looking forward to this week and what you think this episode may mean for the end of the season. So now it's time to talk about The Flash and look at the numbers from last week's episode titled, I Know Who You Are. So, did the big reveal of uh, Savitar's identity as Future Barry bring in large numbers for The Flash. Well, yes it did, <laughs> it did. 2.69 million live viewers, 2.69 million live viewers for The Flash, and these are the highest numbers we've seen since, I believe, the Gorilla Grodd episodes? 
have to double check, but I do believe that was the highest number. Well, okay, well, not counting the musical episode duet, which had pretty high numbers. But I still feel like that episode was inflated because it pulled in viewers that, you know, were fans of Glee and some of the... Look, okay, I realize... I'm just being picky here, okay? That, I didn't really like the duet episode, so for me, it's like... Uh, I just want to forget that it ever existed. Like, I'll totally skip that episode whenever I watch back season three. I'm just being super picky here. Uh, either way, these are great numbers for The Flash. And hopefully we can sustain this momentum and these numbers going in to the last couple episodes. I think we can. I'm very confident we can. Uh, but this week's episode is titled Cause and Effect, and here is the synopsis. Barry takes drastic measures to stop Savitar. Meanwhile, HR continues to push Tracy Brand to design the trap for Savitar, and Killer Frost returns with an interesting proposal. So we may have some fake tension this week with The Flash because we know whatever Cisco does with Barry's mind probably won't have any long-term effects based on what we know about the last couple of episodes coming up this season. So unless they do something major to Barry, I feel like this will be a plot uh, relegated to this episode and probably overcame within this episode. Something else kind of strange while reviewing this upcoming episode, the actor uh, Ann Dudick is listed as a guest star in the credits for this episode. Now, I was under the impression that she was going to be a new series regular, but maybe that's a mistake based on what info we've been given. It's also possible that she'll be upgraded to a series regular next season if she sticks around, but I thought that was a little odd. So yeah, last episode we got the huge reveal that Barry Allen, or a version of Barry Allen, is inside the armor of Savitar. Um, and we still don't really know if it's our Barry or it's another Barry, so in an effort to stop Savitar from actually remembering anything that happened to him during the time period that we're in right now, Cisco is going to create this tech that's going to try and make Barry forget any events that are happening uh, at the moment on The Flash. Now, like I said, it stands to reason that this won't have any long-term effects, but if you think about it, Barry Allen in 2024 said he didn't know who Savitar was. And some of us thought, well, how is that possible? Is he lying? Or, you know, did, you know, did he not go through what our Barry's going through right now? But what if it really was true that he did not know who Savitar was? And it was because of this process that we're having right now on the show. What if this process will have a long-term effect on Barry and he won't remember anything that's happened? That would be kind of interesting, uh, you know, and it would give uh, Barry Allen 2024 a foot out the door when it comes to honesty about not remembering who Savitar is. Again, this is super speculative. Uh, but it, to me, it does make sense if they wanted to go that route. However, based on what little info we have on Savitar's origins at this time, it's hard to tell just how connected he is to our Barry Allen. Now, I did make a Savitar video over the weekend, sort of answering some of the questions I've seen pop up in my videos about what I think is going on with Savitar and, you know, some of the stuff happening with Iris and just other little things. But I do have some more wild theories and ideas that are a bit more on the fringe uh, about how Savitar is getting memories and things from our Barry Allen, because I'm still not convinced that he's a future Flash. I'm still not even convinced that he's from our timeline. Uh, but I'll drop a video about that either later today or sometime tomorrow in the middle of the afternoon. Uh, so look forward to that. We also see that Killer Frost has a proposal for the team, and I think hoping for it to be some kind of truce may be asking for too much. I mean, she may approach them with terms of surrender from Savitar. So unless she has a major change of heart and learns to control that Killer Frost persona very quickly, I just don't see why she would flip and come back to them, you know, come back to Team Flash. Um, although if she thinks that Julian can cure her of this hateful, hateful nature that's inside of her, she may return and offer them her services as Killer Frost in return for them curing her. I don't know. Um, you know, the Killer Frost personality is just so dominant. I just don't see how or why this version uh, on Earth 1 would be any different from the one we saw on Earth 2, who was pretty much pure evil. I would love to see Caitlyn become part of the team as Killer Frost, but I have a feeling that if she does come back to the show as part of Team Flash, uh, she will lose her metahuman powers altogether because that would make her kind of OP. So we'll have to see. Uh, my only concern, though, is if they find a way to take away her metahuman powers, you know, then they could do that for everyone in the pipeline, right? Like all the people they have captured, or they could capture and remove powers of metahumans in future episodes by using the same procedure. So 
if they do uh, use this procedure on Caitlyn, they need to be very specific on how they did this or how they managed to pull it off. Because otherwise, it's one of those things where it's like, why are they not using this all the time? They could be using it, but they're not. So they have to be very specific. Uh, so what do you guys think? Do you think Killer Frost is going to come back with a truce for the team? Or is this going to be some sort of like, you have to surrender because Savitar is just going to kill you anyway kind of thing? Uh, let me know in the comments below. Next up, Arrow and their live viewership numbers. Just so you guys know, uh, last week's episode of Arrow underneath was probably my least favorite. Okay, not probably. <laughs> I think it was my least favorite episode of this season on Arrow. Was I wrong? Like, was I wrong about that? Did the viewers tune in and support this Felicity-centric episode, totally proving me wrong and, you know, showing that it was a great episode? Uh, well, no. <laughs> Both this episode and the previous week's episode only pulled in 1.36 million live viewers. Holding steady this week, uh, you know, but that's not always a good thing. Like, holding steady to me, uh, it can be good. It, it isn't usually a bad thing unless your numbers are way lower than normal, and in this case, they are. Um, Arrow was on the upswing, and then it took a nosedive with the previous two episodes uh, down to 1.36 million. It's just not good. Uh, so let's see what happens when we get back on track with this week's episode, Honor Thy Fathers. Here is the synopsis. Oliver returns to the mayor's office and faces one of his most pressing issues yet, the forced release of dozens of violent criminals prosecuted by Adrian Chase. Meanwhile, a crate is delivered to Oliver's office containing a mysterious corpse encased in concrete. So this week, we should see Oliver back in his green arrow suit, as well as back in the mayor's office. Uh, we also see the delivery of a corpse in a cement casket uh, dropped off at Oliver Queen's office. And it looks to be a man in the box. So I'm going to go out on a limb and say it could be Robert Queen's body, uh, because that would be very sadistic, I think. Now, how Prometheus would have this body, I don't know. Hopefully, if it is Robert Queen's body, they explain that bit of information in the episode. Uh, the only reason I'm going with this is based on the title of the episode, uh, Honor Thy Fathers. I, I think it might be related to the both of their fathers. I mean, it could be someone else's father, but I'm pretty sure it will be the parent of someone relevant to the episode. So Cody Rhodes, a.k.a. Derek Sampson, is back this week. Uh, we haven't really seen much of this character after our last encounter with him, uh, but we do know that he was locked up uh, in the metahuman wing of Iron Heights. Uh, we also know that Oliver will have to release criminals in this episode based on being prosecuted by Adrian Chase. So is this how Derek is going to get out? Um, I guess so. <laughs> it just seems crazy to me, though. He's a very dangerous metahuman, and they're going to just let him go free? I mean, okay, I get it. You know, the laws weren't designed for someone like him. But will this play into the ideas uh, from the last couple episodes that Argus can't hold dangerous criminals without a proper trial? I mean, is that what they're going with here? You know, but am I the only one who thinks it's crazy to let a metahuman with powers like Samson's uh, go free without any plans in place to stop him if he goes on a rampage again? Because... Really, how would you stop him? I mean, I get it, laws are laws, but with a person like this, you need to have a plan B in case they freak out and attack the city again. And according to the trailer, we see that the Green Arrow and his team will encounter not only Samson, but Prometheus out on the street. So hopefully this is an action-heavy episode. I could really, really use more action or more content related to the Oliver and Adrian thing. Uh, the last two weeks have really drained me, honestly, to be completely honest. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty excited about this week's Arrow because I think that we're going to be back to form and, uh, maybe back to more of what season five has been about so far in the back half of the season. So are you looking forward to this week's Arrow? Um, how do you feel about rogues being set free? And do you think Samson's attack uh, on the team will have any long-term effects? Uh, let me know in the comments below. I also wanted to mention I've started something new on Saturdays. I'm doing something called Fan Battles, a video where I ask you guys to vote on the outcome of a new question every weekend based on all of our favorite DC TV shows. Um, you'll see it linked here, and I think you might still have time to vote on the video. Maybe not on Twitter by the time this goes up. I don't know. But uh, head over to that video, show a little support on that, because I think it's going to be a lot of fun. We'll be doing a lot more of those through the summer to hold us over till our shows come back. Uh, so just click the link and go check it out. Follow all the rules over there and uh, vote, 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 vote. Uh, anyway, that's all I got for you guys today. Take care. Have a great day. Have a great week. And I will catch you later.